Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi, and this lecture pertains to hematopoietic growth factors of hematology and transfusion medicine board review made simple. Growth factors are very important since they are used often in the field of hematology. Each hematopoietic lineage has a specific growth factor which derives a production of that cell lineage. Erythropoietin stimulates RBC production. Colony forming unit erythroid proliferation into mature RBCs requires erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is made mostly in the kidney and slightly in the liver. And once it binds to its receptor on the RBC precursor cell surface, it promotes survival and proliferation of the RBC precursors. Epitin alpha, either epigen or procrit, are a recombinant form of erythropoietin known as erythropoietin stimulating agents or ESAs. Darbopoietin alpha RNS is also related to erythropoietin, but it has a 5 prime n N-linked oligosaccharide chain, which results in higher molecular weight and three times longer half-life than epitin alpha. If no response to ESA after eight weeks, despite dose escalation, may discontinue the ESA. ESAs may also promote thromboembolic event, especially if hemoglobin is allowed to raise more above 12 grams per deciliter. Quickly, the use of ESAs will go over each one, but one, anemia associated with HIV, two, chronic renal insufficiency, three, preterm infants, four, anemia associated with chemotherapy in the palliative setting, five, myelodysplastic syndrome, six, to reduce or eliminate need for allogenetic blood transfusions. Number one, anemia associated with HIV much more common in the pre-heart era than now. Usually in HIV, erythropoietin level does not increase with decreasing hematocrit. ESAs are usually effective in HIV patients with erythropoietin level less than 500. Usual dose is epitin alpha, 40,000 units once a week, and may increase to 60,000 units once a week if hemoglobin does not increase by one gram per deciliter within four weeks. Two, chronic renal failure. Due to underproduction from inadequate erythropoietin production by hypofunctioning kidneys. Usual dose is epidin alpha, 100 to 150 units per kg, administered three times per week, or darbopoietin, 0.45 micrograms per kg once a week. Do not administer hemoglobin greater than 10 to 12 grams per deciliter, since it may cause hyperviscosity and thrombotic events. Be certain iron stores are adequate, and if low, replaced with either IV or pure iron. Peritin must be greater than 100 nanograms per deciliter. Three, anemia in preterm infants. Premature infants less than 1,250 grams often are anemic due to several reasons. One, premature kidneys, which do not produce adequate erythropoietin. Two, frequent blood draws in the neonatal, neonatal ICU. Three, rapid growth of the infant. 4. Reduced lifespan of the RBC. In this scenario, ESAs at 200 units per kg administered three times per week have shown to improve anemia. 4. Anemia in patients with cancer receiving chemotherapy or radiation. Case report. 45-year-old female with stage 2 breast cancer status by modified radical mastectomy currently undergoing dose-dense AC presenting with fatigue after third cycle of chemotherapy and a hemoglobin 8. Negative occult stool, normal iron studies, no hemolysis, and low reticulocyte count with normal creatinine. Question, should you utilize ESAs? Answer, no, since the treatment goal is curative. This is very, very important. ESAs are no longer indicated for patients receiving chemotherapy in the adjuvant slash curative setting. Since studies have shown decreased survival in patients receiving ESAs. ESAs are still indicated in patients with anemia receiving chemotherapy for incurable disease in the palliative setting. Epitin alpha at 40,000 units once a week has shown to improve quality of life and decrease RBC transfusion requirements in patients receiving chemotherapy for palliative reasons. Darbopoietin at 2.25 micrograms per kg weekly 
or 500 microgram every three weeks may also be used. Five, myelodysplastic syndrome. ESAs may be used in low-risk MBS to increase hemoglobin level. The lower the endogenous erythropoietin, the more effective the ESA may be. Six, to reduce or eliminate need for allogeneic blood transfusions. May administer ESAs prior to surgery and phlebotomize the patient's own blood and administer autologous blood transfusion during surgery so a patient does not have to receive another person's blood. May consider in Jehovah's Witnesses patients who do not accept allogeneic blood transfusions. Lack of response to recombinant erythropoietin. Case report. 50-year-old female receiving chemotherapy for stage 4 lung cancer develops anemia and is initiated on epidin alpha, but hemoglobin does not improve two months later despite dose escalation. What to do? Dose escalation is recommended if no response after four weeks of therapy with recombinant erythropoietin or six weeks of treating with darbopoietin. <clears throat> if dose escalation does not work, must rule out iron deficiency. May initiate a recombinant erythropoietin when hemoglobin is below 10. Remember, do not administer recombinant erythropoietin in the adjuvant setting of cancer with chemotherapy as it has shown to decrease survival. Since cancer cells have erythropoietin receptors on them, which may act as growth factors. Adverse side effects of ESAs. One, worsening hypertension and renal failure patients. Two, Increasing chance of thromboembolic event. Three, increasing mortality in cancer patients receiving chemotherapy. Symptomatic anemia, case report. Seven-year-old man with MDS presenting with chest pain, hemoglobin of seven, and a corrected reticulocyte count of 1%, without evidence of GI bleeding. What to do next? Transfuse impact RBCs first since he's symptomatic. Once he's transfused, then may assess whether he may be a candidate for erythropoietin stimulating agents. Goal hemoglobin should be above 8. Myeloid growth factors. Granulocyte colony stimulating factor, GCSF, plays a central role in neutrophil formation. Usually levels are low, but may be increased during infections or inflammatory states. Mutation in the GCSF receptor will cause severe congenital neutropenia. Plograstine, recombinant form of GCSF produced in E. coli, is used in the United States, and lenograstine, GCSF used outside the United States. FDA approved indications for use of plograstine include one, severe chronic neutropenia, either congenital, cyclical, or idiopathic, two, Mobilize peripheral blood stem cells for transplantation. Three, accelerate neutrophil recovery in neutropenic patients receiving chemotherapy, either hematologic or oncologic malignancies. Peg filigrastrine. Pegylation, which is polyethylene glycol covalently bound to amino terminal methionine group, reduces renal clearance and prolongs its effect. Single dose equals 11 days of filigrastrine. If administered after previous neutropenic fever following chemotherapy, it will reduce the likelihood of fever and neutropenia. Sargramustine, GMCSF. Granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor. Increases production of neutrophils as well as macrophages. Increases antigen presentation by macrophages. Interestingly, deficiency of GMCSF will not cause cytopenias but human pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, since macrophages do not clear the excess surfactant in the alveoli. <clears throat> FDA approved indications for use of GMCSF include one, to improve neutrophil production in patients with delayed engraftment after transplantation, two, mobilize autologous peripheral blood stem cells for collection, three, promote neutrophil recovery after autologous or allogenetic stem cell transplant, or reduce risk of due to infection in patients more than 55 years old undergoing induction chemotherapy for AML. Febrile neutropenia case report. 56-year-old man presenting with fever who received chemotherapy seven days ago for lung adenocarcinoma. WBC of only 900 with absolute neutrophil count ANC of 500. It's grade 4 neutropenia. Hemoglobin 9. 
platelets 90,000, normal PT, PTT creatinine, patient initiated on empiric antibiotics, cefepime and vancomycin, and blood cultures are drawn. Question. Should the patient receive growth factors on this admission and our next cycle of chemotherapy? Febrile neutropenia is associated with significant mortality. Patients need broad spectrum antibiotics immediately. This is a medical emergency. Two randomized trials have demonstrated that prophylactic use of GCSF reduced the time of neutropenia by half, as well as neutropenic fever. Typically, we need to use GCSF for seven days after each round of chemotherapy. Be certain that the growth factor is administered 24 hours after chemotherapy is ended to prevent possible myelodysplastic development. The studies have not shown a survival benefit, but combining all the trials, meta-analysis has shown a reduction in infection-related mortality. Also, more possible to administer full-dose chemotherapy with growth factor support. The administration of GCSF during active neutropenic fever is less effective than prophylactically using it. It has shown a reduced hospital state, but not mortality. ASCO recommends use of GCSF during active infection if patient is expected to have prolonged more than 10 days duration of neutropenia, profound neutropenia, less than 100, unstable or fungal infections. Same with pegthylgrastrin. Prophylactic use has shown to reduce risk of febrile neutropenia significantly. Important, do not administer chemotherapy sooner than 14 days when using pegthylgastrin. Recommendations for use GCSF include 1. Primary prophylaxis for patients receiving chemotherapy with more than 20% chance of developing febrile neutropenia, most referred to the trials. 2. Secondary prophylaxis after neutropenic fever episode. 3. Patients older than 65 with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma treated for a curative intent. 4. AML after induction therapy, especially in patients more than 55 years old. 5. ALL after completion of induction chemotherapy. 6. Mobilization of stem cells. GCS not only increases neutrophil production, but also cleaves the bond with CXCR4, releasing the CD34 positive stem cells into the circulation. The FDA has now approved concurrent GCSF along with CXCR4 antagonist, Plerixafor, for stem cell collection. 7. Acceleration of neutrophil recovery following stem cell transplant or delayed engraftment or even graft failure. 8. Use in severe chronic congenital or cyclical neutropenia, less than 500 ANC. 9. Low to intermediate international prognostic index NDS with neutropenia. 10. Diabetic foot infections. GCSS has reduced the need for surgical amputations. Important to note that non neutropenic sepsis, GCSF is not recommended. Well, grass team side effect. 40 year old man serving as a stem cell donor receiving granulocyte colony stimulating factor develops worsening left upper quadrant pain, which progresses to rigid abdomen, hypotension with falling hematocrit. What happened? Answer splenic rupture. Clograstein is known to cause splenomegaly, which may lead to splenic rupture. It can also cause bone pain, up to 30% of patients. Platelet growth factors. Thrombopoietin is a primary regulator of platelet production. Liver is a primary site of thrombopoietin production. Platelets typically decrease thrombopoietin, so the lower the platelet count, the higher the thrombopoietin level. Very important in ITP, Low platelets are not accompanied by high thrombopoietin levels, most likely taken up by increased megakaryocytes in the marrow. Therefore, not only is there increased destruction in ITP, but there's also decreased production of platelets due to inadequate thrombopoietin. Case report. 39-year-old female presenting with recurrent thrombocytopenia and TKI with platelet count of 9,000. She has known ITP. HIV negative, hepatitis B and C negative, ANA negative, H. pylori IgG negative, no new medicines initiated. Normal LDH, PT, PTT, and creatinine, so rules out DIC or TTP. Normal WBC and hemoglobin, so only one cell line down. Peripheral blood smear reveals through thrombocytopenia with a few large platelets and no schistocytes appreciated. 
bone marrow biopsy, although not needed for diagnosis of ITP, reveals megakaryocytic hyperplasia and no evidence of dysplasia of any cell lines. She's had multiple relapses despite multiple doses of IVIG, steroids, rituximab, and even splenectomy. What to do next? Consider initiating thrombopotent receptor agonist, Romiplost or l trombopac l 50 mg daily administered orally, binds to the thrombopotent receptor and activates the JAK-STAT pathway. Approved for patients with ITP who have progressed despite IVIG, steroids, rituximab, and splenectomy. Romiplostine is subcutaneously injected from a potent receptor agonist. So approved for patients with ITP who have progressed despite IVIG, steroids, rituximab, and splenectomy. Remember, for both romipotent agonist agents, only use if there is increased risk of bleeding. Do not aim to normalize platelet count. Increase and also increase risk of marrow fibrosis seen in the clinical trials, so be very cautious. This concludes the hematopoietic growth factors chapter. Thank you.